Hello, Crypto Universe. This is Techman34 back with a breaking mining tech review. I wanted to talk to you guys about a new FPGA card and what FPGA actually is and what it might mean for us miners. So let's get into it. So real quick, the crypto mining hardware progression started with CPU mining. Back in the day, you could mine Bitcoins with your wimpy laptop CPU and get tons of coins. Then GPU mining came out, and that was orders of magnitude more powerful than CPU mining. Then we had FPGA come out. Okay, now that's Field Programmable Gate Array. And it's basically a series of chips that can be programmed and reprogrammed to do different tasks. And so they are more powerful than GPU mining cards. However, they quickly gave way to ASICs because ASICs are much more powerful, orders of magnitude above FPGA. So real quick, so to conclude the kind of history lesson here, from CPU mining on one end of the spectrum, you've got the most flexible but the least powerful processing. It can do almost anything, right? So think about your computer. You can do anything with it to ASICs on the other end, which are the least flexible, but the most powerful. And they're designed for only one thing. So an ASIC, again, is application specific integrated circuit. It's a box of chips with some fans to keep them cool because they are just hashing and hashing and hashing and they only do one thing. Now, we're gonna talk more about FPGA. All right, so most of you are probably not that familiar but years ago, FPGA mining did gain traction and was more powerful than GPU mining. Then ASIC developers came in and basically just crushed the FPGA market. A lot of the development work that went into building the bit streams for the FPGA cards were basically utilized in the ASIC design, but at a much higher scale. And so ASICs were orders of magnitude more powerful than FPGA cards. And because of that, FPGA pretty much went away. Bitmain got so good at building ASICs so quickly that there really wasn't a ton of room to compete for the FPGAs. Now, with ASICs facing resistance by fork, I'm calling it, where we saw Monero and other coins trying to fork their algo to prevent the ASICs from being compatible with their network, FPGAs can step back in because they are reprogrammable. Okay, so where ASICs are not, an ASIC, you fork off the uh, algo and the ASIC doesn't have any other coin to mine, well, guess what? You got a doorstop. Okay, with FPGA cards, they can be adjusted post fork to continue to mine and they have actually been in use for some time. So in reading through these threads on Bitcoin Talk, and I'm going to share the information here so you can do your own research, it is very interesting to see that there's a small community of FPGA developers that have actually been taking advantage of this, uh, some even mining successfully on AWS instances and things like that. So I thought that was really interesting. Uh, but let's talk more about what is uh, this actual release here. Is this Xilinx VCU 1525 FPGA okay I'm not going to read through all of this but it's specialized reprogrammable hardware all right it's dual slot PCIe full length so it's basically the size of a graphics card uses about the same power but it delivers 10 to 100 X performance acceleration over server CPUs okay so think about that the power of that um, server CPUs are very powerful and now think about 100x to that. There is some more specs here and 64 gigabytes of onboard DDR4 RAM. Yes, so check this out. So on the back of the FPGA you literally plug in four 16 gigabyte slots of DDR4 memory into this bad boy. So what do you need to actually make this work? Right now you need a Windows PC build. Okay, I'm going to talk more about the structure of this release. What is effectively happening is a guy on Bitcoin Talk is releasing a bitstream 
for an algo that you can mine with this FPGA card. All right. Now, as you know, these miners like Claymore and some of these other guys, they often integrate a dev fee into their mining program. And so this guy, Whitefire, is actually proposing a 4% dev fee for what he will be unleashing to the market for free, which is his basically locked down bitstream that you can program into this FPGA card. So you need that Xilinx VCU 1525 FPGA, get the active cooling, which has a fan. There's a passive one that doesn't. It's a dev kit. It comes with the FPGA card. It also comes with software to program the card. Note that the software itself is node locked. So if you get a bunch of FPGA cards, you're going to want to upgrade your software on one of those to fully floating uh, license, which will allow you to reprogram any card uh, in your possession. You also do need that additional DDR4 RAM, okay? So real quick, you're gonna have, just to clarify again, you're gonna have a Windows PC build, so that's motherboard, RAM, CPU, so forth, and so that RAM is separate from this RAM. I'm speaking about the additional DDR4 RAM that will plug directly into the FPGA card. And again, that's up to four 16 gigabyte sticks of RAM, and it's DDR4, so for a total of 64 gigabytes. So the FPGA, again, is powered via the PCIe 16 slot, and it interfaces with the motherboard via USB. So again, risers can be used, but only for power. The micro USB on the card connects to the USB on the motherboard. And you need the software to program the bitstream and the bitstream is basically the mining instructions that these developers will be creating for us um, to the FPGA card itself. And then you run the bitstream and you're off in hashing. Now, what algorithms will we be able to mine with this? Well, it doesn't work for all algorithms, at least not right now. Now, I suspect that we're going to see a movement uh, towards more of these coming out. But right now, this gentleman is targeting uh, Kekak, which is Smart Cash, MaxCoin. And here's some stats about uh, from his post on the Bitcoin talk thread, the profitability based on the pricing at that time. Tribus, which is Denarius, Invertus, Phi, sixteen twelve, Luxcoin, and Foam, Scunhash, various coins. Essentially, he's releasing, I think, Kekak first is what he was saying. And then the rest of these will come out um, soon to follow there is a lot of work that goes into this because he is trying to obviously lock down his proprietary work think about you know how much money claymore has made with many many thousands of miners running his program and we're all contributing that you know one to two percent uh into his wallet as we mine on our machines this gentleman is trying to do that that same thing he does not want to just you know, yeah, it'd be great to just give it out for free, right? But, you know, he's putting in a lot of work. He has the skills to do this. So he's unleashing these free with the dev fee. Uh, there was also potential talk of Equihash if it forks, which I thought was interesting because um, those of us that have the Z9 minis coming from uh, Bitmain, hopefully those pan out. If they don't, if the, some of the main coins fork, there probably will be some that don't. But essentially we might be able to hash on the forked equa hash if uh, the FPGA can be reprogrammed for that as well. All right, so let's talk yield and ROI. So I'm gonna post the uh, link again to Whitefire's Bitcoin talk thread, but he mentioned that the yield is around 20 to $57 per card per day, okay? So he posted a screenshot and a small video of an eight FPGA rig that he's running. So he's talking 160 to $456 per day for that one rig. Now each VCU 1525 card costs about $4,000. So it'd be 32K for the whole rig. So your ROI is roughly 70 to 200 days depending on the algo. And he says that he's not the only one mining with these cards, which 
some of that I think is uh, substantiated via some of these other guys that are chiming in about their experience with FPGAs as well. Though a lot of people are skeptical, okay? And so I want to kind of leave you with this, that this is hypothetical at this point, all right? This bitstream is not out. We do not have exact, you know, video proof or, or even photos of him hashing with this. We've seen videos of the rig running, and we've got the, these reports from Whitefire. We've got some other developers chiming in the, in the discussion. It does sound like this is potentially plausible in my opinion from from what I've read uh, but I encourage you to to uh, you know use caution and you may even want to wait for confirmation that said the possibility to mine for significantly more profit per required power seems like it can open the door to the next evolution of mining for us now what I mean by that is basically we're talking about Equivalent power per card. So how much power does a normal eight card rig draw? You know, we could be talking 800 to 1200 watts depending on the card. But now think about profitability going up 10x basically or more potentially on that one rig. So you can fit that much more mining profitability into your current power capacity and constraint. So I think it's very promising. I have purchased one. There is a long lead time on that as well. So if you are interested, you may want to get on it now. Uh, it's roughly four to seven weeks. So my card is actually supposed to be coming roughly, I think, probably another five weeks. So I'll keep you posted. And I'm following this thread. I'm going to be putting together a tutorial also once I get the FPGA card, how to load the bitstream, how to run it, issues I run into, and things like that. So make sure that you subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And thanks for your support. I'll see you on the next video.